So the rituals and routines of the workshop, and this is probably for those of you who have writing workshops in your classroom, what you spent the first month and a half doing was setting these routines and rituals. But in fourth and fifth grade, writers in your classroom are writing in notebooks. Is that right? Okay. So that's part of the routine is that they have these, usually it's a marbleized notebook and that's where they're, they're doing their writing. Now in my class, um, I never wanted them to have their notebooks inside their desks. We had a special place for their writer's notebooks and so that was one of the rituals and routines that made writing like distinct. So that it wasn't just because the, they're, it was special. Writing notebooks are too precious to kind of be in the black hole that becomes their desks. Um, for those of you who are working on this writing workshop thing in your classrooms now, what are some of the routines and the rituals that you're finding maybe difficult about writing workshop? It's one of the things that you struggle with as a teacher with the writing, with the writing workshop. Short responses. So students aren't writing enough. Is, is anybody else having that issue in their classrooms where they're not getting enough writing from their students? Because that's something that, again, that in the beginning you want to get um, a routine and ritual around, so what do you do when you think you're done? That kind of thing. Um, what are the expectations for your, your writing, during writing time, what are the expectations of how much you write? Because some kids will write two or three sentences and then they, that they think that they're done. So how are we growing that? And if you have a class that's struggling, to start off small, with small expectations and, and maybe shorter periods of time. But um, I'm so uncomfortable. I keep on thinking of this. I can't. I'm going on and I'm just keep on thinking that we have this videotape. So every time I'm about to say something, I'm like, does that sound good? <laughs> um, but anyway, so one of the things in fourth and fifth grade, because we want them to write a lot, and we should have that as an expectation. One of the things that I know fourth and fifth grade teachers is they have a checklist in the writer's notebook. It's one of the routines that they start off with. And that students have to write an, a complete entry and that that means a page and a half. And that might be something you have to work up to. So like if I'm done with two sentences and your students, and they, they're, I'm done, I have nothing else to write. Well, what can you do? Like so maybe you have to do some mini lessons on free writing or brainstorming or just moving your pen, you know, with just stream of consciousness until you get to the end of the page. Basically, with the routines and rituals, you want to think, think about what problems may occur in your classroom or are occurring in your classroom and how can I solve those problems as a whole class. And use your mini lessons to do that. If you have your classroom, the environment, when you step back and look during writing workshop and it doesn't look as it should, kids are moving around or they're not working on their writing or they're talking, then stop, you know, stop don't go on to the unit study yet. Stop and really focus on management of the writing workshop. Make a chart in your class that says, what should writing workshop look like? And then list those things with your students. And then spend some time, instead of one-on-one -on -one conferencing, doing whole class observations and tell them that for the next week, we're going to focus on making our writing workshop look in the way that we s expect it to. So that means that students are at the desk writing, um, conferencing one-on-one, -on -one, there's no movement, People are, people are um, staying in one place the entire writing time. Like that's one of the things on your chart. And then you could have uh, like a rubric for that. Like one of the things that we did is we made a grid, a five day grid, and it was for two weeks. So it was like a big box with a, a two, five rows and two columns, two, two rows, five columns. And each day we went back over and said, how do we do? Did it look on a four point scale? And we graded how it looked or how it felt each day. And then by focusing on that as a whole class, by the end of the period, the pro that problem was usually solved. Because things that came up during that time, if it was maybe a, a one on the scale, was because kids were getting up to go to the bathroom and it made it uh, hard for other kids to stop. Okay, so then one of the things that we worked out during that time was that, that I'm gonna give a warning to the class five minutes before writing workshop starts and that means everybody has to go to the bathroom before then because no one's allowed to go during writing workshop. Things like that. Mat writing materials. If they don't have pencils, like, do you have kids getting up and sharpening pencils? I know that was in my class a big thing, like writing workshop would start and then you'd have a line of like five kids sitting there with the electric sharpener and it makes it hard for everybody else to get started. 
So and again, like what can you do in your classroom to sort of solve that problem before it starts? Maybe you have a pencil monitor. That's what we did in my fifth grade class. And that person knew when writing workshop was, his job in the morning was to go and make sure that the writing workshop tin of pencils, they were all sharpened and filled. This goes way back. We used to have um, when the desks, a regular desk, where there would be a stack of paper, pencils, um, I don't know what you'd do to edit, the children self-edit, and a thesaurus and a dictionary. And that was always... In the writing center. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, and that's a great thing. Like I would, we had a writing center in my classroom too. And so in the writing center, there was a person that was what the monitor did. They made sure that that was stacked with stuff. Another thing we had to work out was that I wanted my kids to come to the rug for meeting with all their stuff, with their writer's notebooks and their pencil, the things that they needed. Because once I said, okay, go back to write, that transition where kids have to go get the stuff they, they would be so long and they'd sometimes lose what the teaching was. So that was one of the, another ritual or routine that we used to solve that problem was that they came to the rug with their stuff ready to go.